Oh boy, oh boy, do we have a big topic tonight. Tonight, we're going to focus on interpreting the graph of the derivative. And just like this picture says, they're going to give us a picture of f prime tonight. And this is by far and away one of the AP exam's favorite questions. And um, we're going to see this multiple, multiple times. And ultimately, our goal today is to take this picture and use that picture to answer these questions. When is F increasing? When is F decreasing? When is there a relative max and when is there a relative min? Of course, we've done this algebraically where they've given us an equation for F. We would then derive it, uh, find all of F's crit F prime's critical points and, and construct a sign chart. Uh, but tonight, instead of doing it algebraically, we're gonna figure out how to do it graphically. So again, it's very, very common for the AP exam to give us a graph without the actual equation attached to it. So we're just kind of dangling there with just this graph. Um, so the first things first is we're going to find all the critical points. And remember, that's a two-step process. The first part is we're going to ask ourselves, when is f prime equal to zero? Um, that's going to identify um, all of f's horizontal tangents. But we also have to ask ourselves, when is f prime undefined? And every once in a while, that's going to come into play in a major way. And then from there, we're going to construct a sign chart. And here's what it basically boils down to. Whenever the graph of f prime is above the x-axis, what we're really saying is that the value of f prime is positive, okay? And then whenever f prime is below the x-axis, what we're really saying is that the value of f prime is negative, and we're going to use that to make our sign chart. So let's dive into our first example. This is a really, really fun graph to kind of kick things off with. And uh, so first things first, we got to set f prime equal to zero. And let's see, I think that's going to happen right here at x equals one, um, right here at x equals 6 and right here at x equals 8. Um, we could also ask ourselves, is this function ever undefined? And I would say that's not true. Um, it's continuous throughout the entire interval. So I've just got three critical points, one at 1, 6, and 8. So let's start the process here of making our sign chart. And let's see. Instead of putting error, well, it depends. We could go either way. It does look like maybe the graph's uh, decreasing infinitely on this side and increasing infinitely on that side. But... Um, so let's do this. We'll say we've got our f primes here, and we've got a critical point at 1, we've got a critical point at 6, we've got a critical point at 8. Now what we've got to try to do is figure out the values of f prime. And what I'm going to do, for instance, uh, you know, maybe at x equals 0 here. When you plug in a 0, the value of f prime is negative, aka f prime is below the x-axis. Therefore, that tells us that f is decreasing. And then you can pick any number between 1 and 6. Eh, let's say I'm going to pick a 2. Well, when x equals 2, the value of f prime is clearly above the x-axis, a.k.a. it's positive. And that'll be true for all values between 1 and 6. Therefore, f is increasing. And then between 6 and 8, you'll see that f prime is below the x-axis, a.k.a. all its values are negative. Therefore, f's decreasing. And then everything past 8 is going to be above the x-axis. Therefore, f's increasing. So now that we got the sign chart, I think we're really in a good position here where we can determine basically all the information we need. Okay, so we'll say, first of all, let's ask ourselves, when is F increasing? We could say that F is increasing uh, from 1 to 6 and 8 to infinity because of Y, because F prime is positive. Uh, number two, maybe we want to know when F's decreasing. We can say, well, f is decreasing from negative infinity to 1 and also from 6 to 8 because f prime was negative. And let's see, what else could we say? Uh, do we have any relative maximum values? We could say that f has a uh, relative max. Where would you say it's at? To me, it looks like there's only one of them, and that's at x equals 6 because f prime changed from positive to negative. I'll squeeze that in there. All right. And then looks like we've got two relative mins. We can say there's a relative min at 1 and a relative min at 8. And again, we're just going to practice our justifications here. Let's see. How would you word this? f has a relative min at x equals 1 and x equals 8 because f prime changed 
from negative to positive. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all there is to it. It's uh, just about interpreting that graph and making a great sign chart. And once we get that sign chart, I think we're in business. But we're going to go a little deeper tonight. And here's my next question. Is it possible to determine when f of x is concave up, when it's concave down, and whether it has a point of inflection or not by using the graph of f prime? Um, so here's the trick. We need to know when f double prime is positive and negative before we can ever say anything definitive about the function being concave up, concave down, or having a point of inflection. Okay, it all goes back to f double prime. We've got to have a firm grasp of f double prime. And what we're going to say is f double prime is the first derivative of f prime. Therefore, f double prime is the slope of f prime. And I'll tell you what, that phrase right there, just repeat that to yourself about 13,000 times. That is a relationship that we need to feel very, very comfortable with. So let's talk about how we're going to construct a sign chart for f double prime using the graph of f prime. And first things first, we've got to figure out when f double prime is either equal to zero or undefined, okay? AKA, where are the horizontal tangent lines? Uh, step two is determine whether the slope of f prime is positive or negative. Okay, and again, we're going to say if the slope of f prime is positive, then the value of f double prime is positive. Or if the slope of f prime is negative, then the value of f double prime is negative. So let's see if we could figure this out here. We've got the same picture to work with. I'm going to try to answer these three questions here on the left side. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a sign chart and see if we can squeeze it in here. I have to shrink my pen size here. All right. Um, first of all, we're going to figure out when f double prime is equal to zero. And I'm going to say right here at x equals 2, um, right here at x equals 3, again at x equals 5, and again at x equals 7. Oh, my garage. we got four critical points here. And then I would also ask myself, well, is the slope ever undefined? And on that function, I would say that is not the case. Uh, so let's see if we can figure out the values of these slopes. Um, I would say all of these slopes are positive. Therefore, I could say f double prime is positive here, which means f is concave up. Uh, between 2 and 3, the slopes are negative, and therefore f is concave down. Then between 3 and 5, the slopes are positive, therefore f is concave up again. Uh, from 5 to 7, whoops, 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 that's supposed to be negative, 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 bang, bang concave down, and then the slopes were positive once again. So again, it's all about reading the slopes here. We could say f's concave up. Oh my goodness, there's a lot of intervals. From negative infinity to 2, from 3 to 5, and from 7 to infinity. And what's your reasoning? It's because f double prime is positive, or you could actually say f prime is is increasing. How about that? Those are two statements that you could use. I prefer to just keep it simple and say f double prime is positive, but if you want to get a little fancy and say it's because f prime is increasing, uh, more power to you. Uh, when are we concave down? f is concave down from 2 to 3 and from 5 to 7 because why? It's because f double prime was negative or you could get fancy and say it's because f single prime was decreasing. So it's either f double prime is negative or f single prime is decreasing. Where are my points of inflection? x equals 2, x equals 3, x equals 5, and x equals 7 because f double prime change signs. Or again, if you want to get fancy, you could say f single prime change from increasing to decreasing and vice versa. All right, so we got a brand new graph of f prime here, so we're going to really rehearse everything that we just did and see how comfortable we feel with it. And I'll tell you what, great time to hit the pause button and just kind of shut me off for the time being and, and try this on your own uh, to see where you're at. So first things first, I'm going to make a sign chart for f prime. And I'm going to ask myself, uh, first of all, is f prime ever equal to zero? And I would say that occurs at 1, 3, and 5. 1, 3, and 5. Um, I'm going to ask myself, is f prime ever undefined? Um, and that is false because the graph here is continuous throughout the entire interval. We'll say our restricted domain is from 0 to 6 here. 
And that reminds me, what I like to do in that case, instead of putting arrows, is I'm going to put hard endpoints of 0 and 6 here. We're going to say f prime is positive, and then negative, and then positive, and then negative. And remember those signs, they just correspond to whether I'm above, then I'm below, then I'm above, then I'm below. And then, so that tells me that f's increasing, decreasing, increasing, decreasing. And then we just work on our sentences here. Good time for you to practice this on your own and um, hit the pause button and then come on back and see if we wrote the same sentences. So here's what mine looks like. And, um, and I just, if you take anything away, is uh, notice the specificity here. We're saying it's F that's increasing from 0 to 1 and 3 to 5 because F prime is greater than 0. So uh, there's no such thing as being too specific. Um, but obviously there is such a thing as being not enough uh, specific and that's going to cost us points. So as you go through here, so it's all about, it's, it's F has relative max at X equals 1 and 5 because F prime changed from positive to negative, so forth and so forth. Okay, same function, and we're going to try to tackle three more questions, and it's about concavity, concavity, and changing in concavity. So now our focus has to shift to F double prime, and remind yourself that F double prime is the slope of F prime, and so our focus is really going to change. We've got uh, a horizontal tangent at 2 and 4, so those are my only critical points. Again, endpoints of 0 and 6 critical points of 2 and 4. And let's see, what can we say about F double prime? Looks like all my slopes are negative right in here. So between 0 and 2, F double prime is negative. F is concave down. Uh, from 2 to 4, it looks like all my slopes are positive. Therefore, F is concave up. And then from 4 to 6, all my slopes are negative once again. And therefore, F is concave down. So same thing here. Try the sentences on your own. Um, be as specific, uh, yet as concise as possible, and we'll see if we got the same thing. All right, here we go. Rock and roll. F is concave up from 2 to 4 because F double prime is positive. Or if you want to get fancy, you can say it's because F single prime is increasing. F's concave down between 0 and 2 and 4 and 6 because F double prime is less than 0. And we've got a point of inflection um, at 2 and 4 because F double prime changed signs. Or we could say it's because F single prime changed from increasing to decreasing. That would also be an equivalent statement. Okay, we're going to get a little fancy here at the end uh, on our last two slides. And we're going to talk about uh, a very tricky concept. And that's, is it possible to determine um, the absolute maximum or where the absolute minimum is on f of x using the graph of f prime? So uh, let's talk about what we can interpret here. We notice that f prime is equal to 0 right here. And it's kind of a strange number, so let's just call it at a. It's you know somewhere between 2 and 3. We could call it 2.25 if you wanted to. Um, but what you'll notice here is if we were to make a sign chart, we've got a critical point at A. Um, we've got a set interval, a restricted closed interval between 1 and uh, looks like 5 with those endpoints. And F prime's negative and then F prime's positive. Therefore, F's decreasing and then increasing. So can we make any definitive statements about where the absolute max or where the absolute minimums occur? And what I'd like to do is I'd like to try to just sketch a mock graph of what F might look like. And uh, what they're telling me here is that um, F's doing, it, you know, it obviously starts at some random height. And the first thing it does between X equals 1 and X equals A is it decreases. And then at A, it turns around and it increases. Okay. Now here's what you can say definitively. You can say definitively that there's a, the absolute max, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry, rewind. The absolute minimum value occurs at x equals a. Now, I don't know exactly what that value is. I don't know the y-coordinate, but I can tell you that I know it occurs at x equals a. And what we're learning here, and this is worth writing down in our notebook, this is a very uh, profound statement here, I guess, is that if f prime ch only changes signs once, then that relative extrema um, becomes the absolute extrema. Okay, I'll say that again. If f prime only changes signs once, and that's what you're seeing in this picture, it only crosses the x-axis once, it only changes signs once, then that relative min became the location of the absolute min. Now, it gets a little funkier determining the absolute max in this case because you're wondering, does it occur at the left endpoint? Does it occur at the right endpoint? Did I really know that this endpoint should be higher than the left endpoint? Did I just kind of, you know, how did I know that? But what you'll notice is, and we'll get into this more later in the year, but it's worth sharing right now, is that the area between the curve and the x-axis 
tells me the amount of decreasing that F did, okay? So between X equals 1 and X equals A, this area represents how much decreasing F did. And then the area between the curve and the x-axis on this side tells me the amount of increasing that F did. And what you'll notice is the amount of increasing far outweighs the amount of decreasing. And that's how I know that this right end point is taller than the left end point. And I know that the absolute max must occur at x equals 5. Okay, now this is going to get a little bit trickier. We're still working with a closed interval that starts at x equals uh, 1. And... Um, so right here at x equals 1, and then uh, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then it ends at x equals 6 right here. So we got a closed interval. But what you'll notice is there's two um, critical points for f prime. So here's what I'm telling myself. f is uh, decreasing between x equals 1 and x equals 2. Starting at x equals 2, now f is increasing all the way until x equals 4. And then starting at 4, f is decreasing until x equals 6. Okay. So we've got two sign changes here. And I'm going to try to make a number line to mirror this. Uh, let's see, we got a 1 and, nope, I'm sorry, that's a 2 because we started at 1, 3, 4. All right, so I'm going to say that f prime is negative, positive, negative. Therefore, f is decreasing, increasing, decreasing. Now, if we were going to try to sketch the graph of f, it certainly gets more challenging right now. Now, remember, this area of this region right here tells me how much, exactly how much decreasing f did. And then um, this section here tells me how much increasing F did. And then this section here tells me how much decreasing F did. Now what we'll do is let's just maybe assign numbers to them to kind of give us a feel for this. And it, it's all relative here. Uh, let me pick out a new color here for my pen. Um, let's see. Let's say that this first region between X equals 1 and X equals 2 maybe has an area of 4 units, okay? So we'll say f decreased 4 units between x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now relative to that 4, it looks like then this region might have an area of 6. And then relative to that, this next region might have an area of, say, 9, because we know it's bigger. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say f starts at some random height. It decreases 4 units, then increases 6, and then decreases 9 units. And we'll see if we can get a feel for this. Uh, let's see, I slide my screen down. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just pick a random arbitrary height, and the first thing that I do from that point is I'm going to decrease about four units, and then I'm going to increase six units, and then I'm going to decrease nine units. And what that does for you is, you know, you basically know that this point has to be taller than the left end point because we did more increasing than we had done it decreasing. And then we knew this left or right end point had to be lower than anything else because you know, from here we had to decrease 9, which was far greater than anything else. So we're going to say that the absolute max has to occur at x equals 4, and the absolute min has to occur at the right end point based off of that analysis. So there's no doubt we're going to get a lot of practice with this. Number one goal is when you walk into class tomorrow, I hope you really feel comfortable taking the graph of f prime and translating it into a sign chart. And if you're good at that, we can take care of everything else. All right, have a great night, and we'll catch you tomorrow.